The standard B is quickly becoming my favorite tier. I think this is going to be my favorite tier 9 tank. I think I'm going to play it for a very long time. I just got this thing, have played eight games in it. It's fucking amazing. Let me show you. I don't understand why no one makes videos in this thing. It's just that good. This is my first game I've seen tier 10s though. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too soon. Okay, for this one, we're on the map Abbey. Now, I'm going to approach this as if you don't know what the fuck to do on Abbey, because I might as well. Haven't done a very, like, articulated video in a while. Basically, on Abbey, this is how you approach this map. There's the two line, the nine line, and the mid. The mid is really bad. Don't really go there unless you're trying to clip someone out, because what happens is the two line gets shots in the mid. So, unless you're able to get into this section of the mid, which is very risky, because he, like... It's a bad play. Don't go to the mid unless it's mid to late game. The 9 line's okay. If you have XVM and the enemy's full of bad players, go to the 9 line, because you're going to find all their bad players over there. And then the 2 line is kind of where the more competent players go, not going to lie. You often find better players over there, because what the mid does is it gives you these great platforms to defend the base, and then also to shoot out into the the mid so this is the position you want to take on this map if you're trying to win the game and that's exactly not what my team is doing this is great absolutely fantastic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to heat they've got mouse is7 you know tanks that i probably will need to shoot heat at and i've only got two teammates coming with us realistically it's going to be a hard fight yeah, we've got a, a 257 going to the mid. <laughs> Wait, I was going to say that's really rare, and then immediately this happened. Okay. Um, this is really weird. This is a weird game. So what I want to do is I want to get shots in that M46 if I can, and you can do that very easily by committing. The problem is that's committing, right? So if I go here, they can now kind of YOLO me, you know? So I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to get shots, but it's very aggressive. Normally, you wouldn't... Yeah, see, I'm spotted. Like, this is not hyper safe of me. And this might actually be bad. The problem is, you see how long that 60 TP has taken to get here? It's not going to be good for me. I might get shots on the 57 as he pushes in. There's a standard B right here. Okay. Good. So this is the opening clip I was kind of looking for, to be honest. I would expect the 57 just to look over and shoot me in a sec here. Can I just shoot this? This boy? Okay. Dude, I'm spotted. He's not. That's really upsetting. That's okay, though. <laughs> We've got a 60 TP flanking me. So here, I don't have to worry about this E50M, really. I'm actually going to focus him down. I think that's the right play for me. He doesn't really know that I'm looking at him. So in this... Oh, hello. I've got the rocket between myself and the 50M. Let's me put shots out like this. The standard B is pushing up. He's going to fall back because there's a 257 there. Good. This guy knows I'm here. Why is he doing this? Do I support? Yes, I do. That's good. Okay. So when playing this angle, I have to watch out for TDs to my left, kind of in their base. Good. And this guy's going to be reloaded, so we're not going to take the hit. This is all fucking solid. I'm really happy about this. Okay, we've pushed down the 9 line. <laughs> we're at the 1,400 damage. What the hell is happening? Okay. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Already could have, like, shot at this. <sighs> Fuck. Okay, 60 TP pushes up, makes the 50 ammo one shot. See, this is the problem, is you get shot at by people like this girl, but since he's spotted, I'm gonna take these shots and see if I can get 900 damage. Good. One more. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. Okay, what's gonna happen on this side? These guys look like they're losing, not gonna lie. But we have the flank now, so <laughs> we killed the E50M. That changes a lot. What I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna push in. And we're going to try to flank someone and not get one shot. Oh, no. <laughs> so I need to get as much damage as I can. This is why this tank seems like it's really good, but the DPM is really lackluster because you can see it's like if you clip someone out, you kind of have to pay for it. So we're going to... I've got three seconds left on this reload. I'm going to get yoled by the 283 here in time. Uh, okay, if I'm the first three... Oh, there's the mouse. <laughs> I didn't even realize. What the fuck? Okay, this is why I'm not YOLOing, is because I think this 183 is going to YOLO me. Okay, one. I can count. Should I just try to out DPM this mouse here? I feel like that's a stupid play, but I'm going to try it anyways because I'm a Unicum. Okay. So I'm just saving my last shot because I want to reload, right? I want the good reload here, and if he's focusing my teammates, I might as well. Oh shit, he's focusing me. Okay. No! I was so close! I was so greedy, but it worked! It was so close to working. God damn it, when I have brothers in arms that play will work. Still, 3500 damage. <laughs> I really like this tank. That's an easy 35k right there. Let's go play again. 
I don't know, hopefully it's not a raffle stump, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, so honestly, what we're gonna do to open up, we're not gonna be reloaded in time to clip someone out at E5. But However, because we have the single shot thing, we can clip someone out who's going into the hill, because we'll be reloaded in time. And so this vehicle, it's basically easy mode. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off, we're gonna put a shot or two if we can, into people going into the hill. And there's no way in hell I'm committing to the hill when they've got fucking three light tanks and like seven mediums. So... We're gonna look for those early shots, we'll analyze the situation, and probably end up going to the one line. Actually, yeah, that might be a good play. Probably, I, so either the one line or right over here is good, because they have two arty, right? So, this might be very viable when they have two arty, and that's what we'll see if, if that happens. So, I should have the timing to get here by the time the PTA and stuff are here. You can see I'm basically as fast as this PTA to my left. We've actually got two shells loaded, so that's perfect. And this is exactly what I'm just going to camp. I'm not going to go to the hill when they have this many meds. So 55A is going. We've got three seconds left on the reload. I'm just going to take the shot anyways. There we go. That's a shot. Unfortunately, it resets my reload, right? But it is what it is. We get the free shot. This guy's going too. No way. We've won the hill. That's so good. This guy... Never mind. That's why I didn't go to the hill. <laughs> T10 looks like he's swallowing suit. The heavy tanks are here. This is where you might go to the pocket. Should I do that? Okay. This thing is really easy if you're in a good position, but after that it becomes hard. So I think when I need, like, you don't have armor, so you can't make a mistake. Now, what I'm gonna do, we're losing this side of the map to a Leopard PTA. I can go challenge him, because tanks like this EBR, you know, it's only an EBR on the hill. It's not a 55A who's gonna be sniped. That guy's 16 HP, he can't take any risks. So, we're gonna be ag aggressive against this PTA with this 1390 and try to take the northern side of the, oh, sorry, dude. Sorry. We're gonna try to take the north from them. Now, this is aggressive. E75 doesn't have shots. This PTA's gotta be here. And unfortunately, the 1390 is not here backing me up. PTA fires. And this is where you wouldn't just clip someone out, right? You'd use the DPM part of your vehicle to your advantage, especially, I mean, if you have support, you have support. But here, I'm gonna just fully reload, and then we're gonna see if we can put shots into this guy. One. Okay, I'm trying to stay already safe while I'm doing this. Unfortunately, the P dude, hit your shot, please. Good. Okay. So that's why. <laughs> that's why I fully reloaded. It was absolutely worth it because I needed that shot. I might have taken more damage because we we're going to say already safe. And from here we can push forward. So if you're ever on this side of the map, this is the best place to be unless they really have the hill. Now in this case, they technically have the hill. I'm not too worried about it. I've got a shot on the C-75 at his ammo rack. If he's not moving, I'm just going to sit here. I bet he's going to camp. And so I might as well sit here for as long as I have to while I reload. And he's going to start moving. So I'm going to put two shots into him. There we go, exactly, and that's a perfect play as far as I'm concerned. Now from here, E75 just died. <laughs> Great. Now we have to fully reload. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit right here. The Conqueror doesn't know I'm reloading, and what I can do is I can be very... This is very controlling. I control a lot of the map by sitting here, and that's why it's a good play. Now, if you take a look at what their team can do right now, this 705 can get onto the hill, and you can see he's made that play. So from my perspective, being where I am is going to be suicide, because these guys are going to get onto the hill, that's when everyone on the hill is going to be comfortable enough to shoot at me. It's not a one-shot T-49 and a one-shot EBR, it's like, they're going to have actual tanks with actual HP on the hill, so for me to stay in the north, even though it's a solid position, is suicide right now, just given the context of this fight. So, they've got a Fosh in their base. <laughs> How did the 1390 get all the way up there? The Fosh should have been here sniping our team. He wasn't, though, thank God. We need to figure out how to turn this into a win. Hmm. I don't know what to do. So the problem here is that they're winning, and I don't like sitting back here, and I don't like that we're losing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I dislike. I'm just gonna stop and aim my shots. I need Artie to survive, you know? Okay. EBR is gonna spot me here. Do I care? No, not really. Okay, that was worth it in my opinion, because it... I need to repair my fuel tanks in case... This thing loses its fuel tanks all the time, so I'm repairing that so I don't get lit on fire. And shooting the EBR is good, because now he's a one-shot. If he makes another mistake, he's absolutely fucked. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fully reload, and I'm going to work on defending this side of the map. I think that's the crux of this game right now. Now, if we can win, it's going to be a massive carry from me, I think. Like, I don't see my teammates in a position to carry right now, so... It sounds arrogant to say, but the reality is they're just not in positions right now that are auspicious. So... If I can take the hill with this scent, that would be so useful. Let's see if we can make it happen. Okay. So we might get hit by the Fosh. 
Do you want to go? I don't really want to take the hit. Oh shit, that's 705. Okay. If this guy gets shot, I've got the pen to deal with the 705. The problem is they're kind of quickly pushing. Look at this, I've got a shot. At least I should. Okay, this is exactly what I need. Hello. Okay. Now we're down already. Really, we just need to kill the 705. I think. But I'm not about to go take a hit for a cent who's not, you know, making anything happen. 705 took the hit. Damn. <sighs> Fuck. It's 4700 damage. I'm still alive. Standard B is killing himself. I've got four seconds left on the reload. Okay. I just want to get one more shot so I get my first 5k damage game in this thing. To be honest, that'd be really cool. Good! 5k! Okay, I'm happy with that one. <laughs> so I don't really know how I could have won that, because I clearly, like, I did 5k damage. I wasn't useless. Maybe if I'd taken the hit against the 705, we would have been in a position to do more damage. But I wanted, I wasn't going to take the hit for the scent. I don't know, maybe that was selfish. Yeah, see, I just saw the way the scent was playing, and that's why I didn't want to take the hit for him. He didn't do his hit points and damage. If I'd taken the hit, he probably would have done his HP and damage, but it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the game. So, 5,100 damage. That's the best game I've had in this thing. Honestly, at this point, it looks like it's going to be the most easy tier 9 tank I've ever had. Maybe easy. It's so good. Like, I feel like it's probably going to be akin to the T67, where what you find with the T67 is bad players think it's overpowered, and then when they get them, they get sub-50% win rates, because one mistake in the 67, you're dead. I think the standard B is very similar to that, but it's so good to finally have a competitive tank in my garage. You can see, like, <laughs> T100 light tank, WZ132, these have been my main tanks, and it's like... This thing is actually really good. So I'm really excited. I'm going to call this video here. I'm going to close with a Ridge advertisement. Pick one up if you want. I think it's a great wallet. I, I actually had one stolen from me, and I got Ridge to send me a second because I use it so much. So, um, you know, watch the advertisement. Get one if you want to. Huge thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I hope to see you for the next one. Bye. So a couple months ago, I found this website. <laughs> no, I'm joking. A couple months ago, Ridge sent me their Ridge wallet. Now the Ridge wallet, if you haven't heard about it, it's basically an RFID blocking wallet, which to some people is important. I personally don't care. Basically, it's a small wallet. That's what you get with this thing. It's freaking amazing. I got the carbon fiber version and I use this thing every day. I've used it for multiple months now and basically the idea is to give you a small wallet. And so I think it's fantastic. If you're looking for a gift for someone, definitely would recommend it. It's one of the most pragmatic pragmatic things you can get someone. A lot of people will buy things that they never use. This is something I expected to be like that, and I use it every day. It's just super small. It's really great. It means you don't have to carry so much crap around, and like honestly, it's fantastic. So if you want to get one of these, what you can do is you can go over to ridgewallet.com slash lemming. That'll let them know that I sent you, which means I get paid when you purchase one of these. And, um, you know, pick one up for yourself or someone. I, I think these would make a great gift to a normal human male if uh, if you're stuck. So, you know, yeah, they definitely use it. Thanks for watching.